Hi, let's talk about the layer two protocol in a little bit more detail. We have understood earlier that there is a physical layer, which is a layer one, and there are different channels which have different functionalities. Now at layer two, those information which is at the lower layer, the layer two will help to take that information towards the higher layer or vice versa. So any information which is coming from the higher layer, which is in terms of packets in a layer three, we'll talk about that. And those information will then coming down to the layer two and travel as a service data unit. So those packets are converted into the SGUs. There are many segmentation and concatenation that happens. And then it takes back to the lower layer, which is a physical layer. So there are three important protocols which are covered in layer two. One is a packet data convergence protocol, PDCP. Another is a radio link control, which is RLC. And third is a MAC layer, which is a medium access control. Now, any information which is coming as a packet, there are certain other information which are the signaling or part of a control plane. So we have certain kind of radio pairs which are capturing the data, which is DRB. And we have certain signaling radio pairs which is used for having that connection built up. And we have the master information and system information block along with the paging, we talked about that. Now, these information are mapped on our different channels at different places. So the information first, when it comes from the upper layer, goes through the PDCP in terms of radio bearers. There is a header compression which happens. So any information which comes down should be compressed so that there shouldn't be much occupancy of the resources. And that is being done by the PDCP along with the ciphering. So certain information which is related to the control plane that is RRC. We talked about, uh, we'll talk about RRC in the subsequent slides. So that information which belongs to the signaling part needs to be secured. And in that case, PDCP does the ciphering for that part. Whereas for the data information, which is coming as a data radio bearers in that case, in that case, we want to have more compression to be done more header compression to be done so that more resources would be available for actual data. So those information bits would be compressed by PDCP in that case. Next to that is a RLC, which is a radio link control. Now radio link control has two important functionalities. One is a segmentation and concatenation. So any information which is coming in terms of the SDUs, which is service data units, that will be converted into PDUs through segmentation and concatenation. Along with that, we have a error detection and correction mechanism, which is automatic repeat request. So in RLC, many PDUs would be there, which would be made up of different SGUs, which are coming from the upper layer. And in that case, how it will be sent over the RLC layer, there are three different modes that are available. One is a transparent mode. Some of the information which are just need to be sent without adding any overheads that will be paging and master information block that will be considered as a transparent mode. So RLC would not add any headers in this particular sublayer. Whereas certain other information which are related to the data, which is data radio periods, or related to the signaling, they could be either acknowledged or unacknowledgement mode. So we understand certain information which needs the acknowledgement such as the emails or such as the content which is being downloaded from the network. So that needs an acknowledgement because in that case, it is not very delay sensitive, but we are ensuring that the data is being transmitted and received properly. Whereas on the other side, certain information such as voice, such as video content, where we want it to be just sent quickly without any delay. In that case, we can use the unacknowledgement mode in the RLC sublayer. We'll talk about that. Now, at this point in time, the different information which is coming from the upper layer that will be actually mapped onto the logical channel. So there are different logical channels, which are the paging, broadcast, common control, and the traffic channel. Now, below to that, below RLC, there is a MAC layer, which is a medium access control layer. Now, it has very important functionality related to the scheduling of the resources across the different users. So within a base station, this scheduler actually helps to allocate the resources efficiently. We'll talk about the scheduling types in detail. 
So what it does is, in case, say, for example, we have a carrier aggregation, we can add different multiplex, we can do use all the SGUs, we can multiplex them, and we can send it back to the physical layer in that case. We also, again, have an error detection and correction mechanism, which is hybrid automatic repeat request at this place also. So understand this error detection will keep on happening almost on different layers time to time. Now, in this case, there are different transport channels which are actually carrying the information which is coming from the upper layers, which are the paging, broadcast, downlink share channel. And here in this case, in the uplink, we have a random access channel which is being there in the Mac layer also. Now, Mac layer, we will talk about that. It will take care of the timing advance, take care of the control functionality, scheduling. All these functionalities will be taken care by the Mac layer. So these important protocols have their own functionality in the overall grid of a protocol layer.